Hello, welcome back to Cloud and Web Developer. This is going to be a series of four videos that I have prepared for you. So on this first video, the first thing we're going to do is to create a SQLite database. We're going to add some information to it, and then we're going to be uh, working on some endpoints, creating some endpoints in Flask to be able to display that information in the database on your browser. That's going to be the mission for today. On the next video, we're going to add more routes, more endpoints, so we can do some CRUD operations to this database from the front end, some create, read, update, and delete operations. And then the video after that, we're going to do some PyTest. We're going to add some unit testing for these endpoints to make sure that everything works as it should. And then on the last video, we're going to upload all these nice projects up to the cloud, most likely AWS. All right, so let's get it started. The first thing we need to do is to have your uh, VS Code open of your whatever it is that you use. And all I need to do for now is to have a folder, working folder for me is project. And I'm going to have a terminal open. And the first thing we need to do when we're working with Python is always a good idea to create a virtual environment. As you can see, the folder is created. Now to activate it. And once you see this uh, name in parentheses, it means that you are inside your uh, virtual environment. Now we're going to install Flask. And for now, this is all we need. Because SQLite is already included in, in Flask, so it's not a problem. Cool. Now let me clear the terminal. And the next thing we're going to do is want to create a SQLite database. And to do that, we stay in the same folder, in the same virtual environment, and we type And I'm gonna be calling it database.db. And now I'm inside SQLite. So this is a command line for SQLite. And then in here, I'm gonna create a table. All right, this command is telling SQLite to create a table that's gonna have an ID, it's gonna be an integer, and it's gonna be auto incrementing. Every time you add a new row, it's gonna move that number forward. Even if you delete a row, it's gonna remember which was the highest ID and it's gonna continue from there. So that's something to keep in mind in the future. The name of the user is going to be a text and I'm just going to put their age and it's going to be an integer. And that's all we need for now. So I'm going to enter and the table has been created. However, it's empty. Let's add some information to it. And to do that, we type. Mm -hmm. OK, that should work. And if you want to see what the database looks like at any point, you can do select all from users. And remember to put the semicolon and I can see Bart Simpson 10 on the index one is there. All right. And as you can see in my folder, there is now a database file here. And I have a little program that you can actually open and visualize the database and the tables and everything you have in it. It's quite handy. So I recommend you to have it. I mean, this is a very simple table at the moment, so it's not really big deal. So in here, you just choose the uh, user table and you can see there's one, Bart Simpson and 10 on ID, name and age. Not necessary, but I like to have that ability to watch what I'm doing inside a database. That's all we need to do for now in the database side. We're going to move now onto your project. We're going to create an app.py file and this is going to be where the action is going to be happening. First thing we need to do is to start importing some of the goodies that we're going to be using. Number one would be to import Flask from Flask and G. G is a very interesting um, functionality that Flask has. It means global. It's a global object in which you can store data and that, that data is available to pretty much anywhere in the app. So it's very useful and we're going to be using it today. So import SQLite 3 and that's all we need. And it, we need just to define as always our app. So this is just basic setup. Perfect. And then we we'll always need to finish with if name equals main. Might as well do it now. App dot run. And then I like to put debug equals true so we don't have to be reloading the server. So that's all you need to do uh, for now to set up your app. Let's now connect to the database that we just created. Let's do connect and then in here I need to put the address the direction in the in my uh, system where the database is and I can find it here with IntelliSense excellent so enter SQL row 
factory SQLite3.row. This it helps you to transform a dictionary, not tuples, into dictionaries. By default, when you read from a SQLite database, you get dictionaries, but those are harder to read. So by doing this line, you're changing it into tuples, which are really easier to read. Okay, let's keep going. So return SQL. Perfect. Now we need to check if the database is actually there. So we're going to do another little function, get DB. If not has attribute G. So if G doesn't have a SQLite 3 database, then add it. So G dot SQLite 3 database is equal, uh, equals to connect DB. Excellent. And then you return that database, so g.sqlite3db. So this is pretty much standard standard issue. There's not much to explain about it. Just if you want to just kind of remember those lines by default, that's good. But as I say, we're just checking is that this global object has a, a, a database attached to it. If it doesn't, then do so and return it to me so I can actually use it. Right now, let's uh, add another important thing that's uh, for maintenance, which is a teardown context. So when you are not, when you're done with this uh, database, you want to close it. Um, otherwise, you're going to be leaking memory in there. So to do that, you do app dot teardown, then g dot sqlitev dot close. So we're doing the opposite that we did in the previous function. This one is actually closing it if g has it when you're finished with it. Nice, okay. Now to start checking if all this is working or not, we need to make the first endpoint. So it's gonna be app route, and this one is gonna be just your main page, your index. And this one, just to check that it's working, we're gonna return a hello world message. Okay, uh, so far so good. So let's start by testing that to see if actually it's working. So to do that, I need to get out of SQLite here with the quit parenthesis command. Uh, no, I, I was lying, that's not true, it's dot quit. There it is, clear. And now we're gonna run the apps with Python app.py. And there is an error here. What's going on? Uh, I put this backwards. So from Flask import. All right, let's try that again. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm missing a number three here. Okay, let's try that again. And this is not a semicolon, it's a colon. All right, okay, it's running now. Right, we need to go onto a browser localhost 5000, hello world. Cool, all right, now we can confirm that at least all this is working. Now, let's keep going. Let's try to display that information that we had about Bart Simpson on a different route, on the user's route. Let's see, at, at. okay, the first thing we need to do is to get that database with the function that we defined uh, above. So it's gonna be get db. And then we need a cursor to be able to do, to execute operations in SQLite, you need a cursor. So do, by, do it, by doing the following, db dot execute. And inside execute, we start adding our uh, SQL commands. Uh, and the table was called users, right? Yeah, from users. And from, uh, by convention should be capitalized. Okay, uh, cool. And then we're gonna save whatever it is that the SQL function returns, we're gonna return it, in, uh, re uh, save it in results. With the fetch all command. Perfect. Now that we have the information returned by the SQL command stored in results, rem results remember it uh, topples. So we need to display those nicely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna return and I'm gonna use an F string to um, interpolate string in JavaScript, that would be the, the comparison. And I'm gonna do it on an H1. And I'm gonna fill this in a minute. I'm gonna break line so it looks a little bit more clean. So 
So this is these brackets are where the information is going to be displayed, placeholders. And to display the information, we need to access the information that is in results. How do we do that? Because it's a tuple, we literally just add it like a normal tuple would be. So results. zero ID and the next one results zero name and finally H cool I mean I'm just gonna break it here so it's easier to visualize I'm trying to keep this big uh, so you can see better Right, so hopefully that there's no no uh, problems there to fix. Let's try again, uh, running the app up to pi, and I have a problem somewhere. Maybe it's not liking the fact that I have this in two lines. Let's try again. Right, okay. So make sure you you make you have it in a in a straight line when you use an f string literal. Right, so that's running, that's exciting. Now let's go to these endpoint users and hopefully we'll be able to see Bart Simpson there. No, there is an error. So let's go through it together. So it says SQLite operational error unable to use to open database file. Right, okay, so that means it's here. I think I'm missing a dot, dot database. Cool. And let's just stop the server and try that again. Mm -hmm. Reload users, and there's another error. Now it says attribute error context follow object attribute has no SQLite 3. I'm uh, missing a 3 up here. All right, let's try that again. Sorry, guys, this is the process debugging, debugging, debugging. No such table user. I think the table was actually called users, right? Users. Okay, those are errors that are easy to fix. And I'm gonna leave them here so you guys, you know, probably can relate if you've been coding. Uh, this is always something. And finally, voila, you can see the ID is one, the name is Bart Simpson, the H is one. However, if you wanted to skip all the uh, debugging and all that, you can always go to my repo. It has a finalized version of this code, the working version. And it's gonna for have four branches. So the branch of today is gonna be this. And remember in the future videos of this series is gonna be a different branch until we get like the final version that we're gonna upload to the cloud. All right, so that's all for today. Now you know how to make a SQL-like database, how to add information to it, and how to display it through endpoints on a browser with Flask. If you like it, please subscribe. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna make these videos every week. I have also social media if you wanna follow me there as well. So some photos and some extra information. This is Carlos for Cloud and Web Developer. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.